Cargo Space by Corey Engel Chapter 1 Unexpected Delay A gut-wrenching screech reverberated throughout the cargo ship, the overburdened. Alarms welled as lights danced in chaotic patterns, awakening the vessel from its silent journey. While en route to its delivery destination, the ship inadvertently collided with a massive object. The impact was enough to forcibly eject crew members from their slumber pods, and they found themselves thrust into a crisis as they awoke. Stumbling to their feet, their hands pressed against their ears to ease the piercing sound of the alarms, the crew tried to regain their bearings. Captain Ethan Hesbian, rising with determination despite the lingering effects of the pod, began barking orders to the crew. His iconic mustache quivered as he shouted. It was a rude awakening, and the team was yet to realize the full gravity of their situation. All hands, report to your stations immediately. I need damage reports now. Hesbian bellowed his voice cutting through the chaos of the alarms. The awakened crew groaned in turmoil. While brushing her dark brown curly hair from her face, First Officer Allie rubbed sleep from her emerald green eyes. Climbing to her feet in a daze, she immediately began assessing the damage. Everybody, get your EVA suits on, she ordered. We need to know what happened. The crew responded slowly, eventually all of them finding their way to the stored extravehicular activity suits. The EVA suits worn by the crew of the overburdened were sleek and tailored to protect in the vacuum of space, composed of a durable midnight blue material with reflective silver accents. The suits featured advanced life support systems and a transparent panoramic helmet. Despite the alarms, the ship's metallic corridor still shone under the soft blue ambient lighting. The sleek design of the centralized hubs leading to specialized compartments contrasted the current disarray. The overburden groaned as if wounded, her hull echoing with the damage. The lighting flickered, intermittently plunging the interior into darkness. As crew members scrambled to don their EVA suits and dashed to their stations, dizziness and disorientation from the slumber pods clouded their senses. Hesbian rushed out of the life support bay on deck one and made his way to the bridge, Ali right on his heels. We need to figure out what happened, Ali, Hesbian said worriedly. That was a big collision. Do you think we're okay? Ali asked fearfully. I hope so. Let's try and stay focused on the task at hand, he responded as he made his way into the bridge. He braced himself against his command station, trying to clear his head. Status report, he demanded, scanning the barrage of data on the screens. An asteroid, sir. It hit us. Breached the hull in the cargo bay on deck three and disabled the ion drive. We're adrift, Allie reported, reviewing the collision footage. Hesbian assessed the situation, watching crew members in EVA suits pour into the bridge. Spotting the young chief engineer, Trevor, he yelled, Trevor, engine room now. Tell me if we've got any fight left in us. Yes, sir, Trevor replied, momentarily disoriented, running fingers through his long, unkept red hair. Time is a lecture we don't have, Hesbian snapped, and someone shot off those damn alarms. Trevor swiftly obeyed, silencing the alarms before he made his way to the engine room, and an uneasy tension lingered in the air. Ali scanned the bridge spotting Maria, whose gray hair was pulled into a tight bun, hinting at her meticulous nature. Maria, deck three. We have a hull breach in the cargo bay. Yes, ma'am, Maria said as she turned swiftly and headed off. Our exterior cameras are down. Allie, get to the observation deck and report back, has been instructed. Heading up now, sir, Allie responded as she made her way up the ladder to the observation deck. Trevor's voice, edged with tension, blared across the comm system. Captain, the ion drive has been damaged during the collision. It's in pretty bad shape, he said while trying to remain calm. We need those drives operational, Hesbian said. I'm on it, Trevor replied. The weight of their predicament was palpable. Hesbian took a deep breath, his stilly eyes surveying his crew. We faced worse odds before, and we've always pulled through. This time won't be any different, he proclaimed, trying to instill hope. Every single one of you knows your duty. Let's get to work. All crew members, not currently tied into a task, please make your way to the medical bay for examination. Alara, I'm putting you in charge of that. Medical officer Alara nodded and said, Agreed. I'll prioritize those showing the most signs of distress. She swiftly headed off to the medical bay to await the incoming crew members who were to be examined. Meanwhile, on deck three, Maria's flashlight cut through the semi-darkness, casting eerie elongated shadows as she moved through the narrow hallways and sections of the ship. Every footstep echoed as she neared the cargo bay. As she entered to patch the breach in the hall, she heard an odd squealing sound that came from the gash made by the asteroid. An oily black ooze ran suspiciously down the walls, 
surrounding the small breach in the hull. It shimmered and vibrated gently. She decided to set down her tools and take a better look at it. When she took a tentative step closer, the ooze seemed to sense her presence. Rippling, it surged forward at her. A strangled scream escaped her lips, her heart thundering in her chest as she stumbled backwards, eyes wide with rising panic. What the hell? She yelled as she rushed over to the door of the cargo bay. The ooze slithered forward to pursue her. Frantically, she fumbled with the door controls, her gloved fingers slipping clumsily around it. It was too late. The ooze lunged for her, sticking to her EVA suit as it crawled its way towards her helmet. With growing desperation, she wiped at it, trying to brush it off, but the ooze clung on, relentless in its advance. Her heart pounded as the ooze made its way to the glass faceplate. She screamed as the ooze squeezed and wreathed around her helmet, forcing its way in through the sills. Fear rushed through her mind as the ooze rolled into the helmet and began to suffocate her. She felt the sickening, slimy chill of the ooze squish its way into her nose, mouth, and eyes. The muffled echoes of her own panic breaths were the last sound she heard before darkness clutched at her, dragging her into unconsciousness as she fell to the floor inside the cargo bay.